Hello dear students. Welcome to first language English of 10th standard. Most likely reference to context questions with explanation is given to you today. This episode will help you to score 15 out of 15. There are more than 45 extracts reference to context sentences taken from different lessons and poems. Better you go through all this and know their reference to context. Every context you will have to have the detailed explanation from which lesson or poem is taken from, who is the author or the poet, then who said this to whom, then in which context it is said. For all this together you will get 3 marks. Totally you have 5 questions of such. It is for 15 marks. The first question came before you. We have our hands full. The above extract is taken from the lesson A Wrong Man in Workers Paradise. It is said by the people, the men in Workers Paradise. In the Workers Paradise, one can find anything except leisure. The people make use of every single minute. They don't have a moment to spare. Women whisper to each other that they should get on with work as time is a flying. Everybody in the workers' paradise believe that time is precious. The sigh complainingly that their hands are full of work and yet these words make them happy and exalted. Shall I put the chops on? The above extract is taken from the lesson, The Gift of Magi, written by O. Henry. When Jim comes back home, he is shocked to see Della's hair gone. Della pacifies him and tries to convince him that she loves him so much. She asks him if she shall put the chops on for dinner. I have too much to do run arounds. The above extract is taken from the play The Pie and the Tart written by Hug Jesterman. It is said by Marion, Mr. Galtier's wife, to Mr. Galtier. Mr. Galtier has been invited to dine with the mayor. He thinks that it is below his dignity to be seen carrying an eel pie through the streets of Paris. Therefore, he asks his wife, Marion, if she could bring it along after him. Marion retorts that it is quite impossible and she has too much to do to run errands. She flew crying as he was picked up hands and jaws. The above extract is taken from the poem to a pair of sorus cranes composed by Manmohan Singh. It is said by the poet about the female sorus crane. A male sorus crane was shot down by a callous hunter early in the morning. A dead male sorus crane was picked up callously by the hunter by its neck and stuffed into a coarse washing bag like a dirty cloth. Seeing this, the female Soros crane flew up crying into the air and circled the sky. If I could put a notion in his head, the above extract is taken from the poem Mending Wall composed by Robert Frost. It is said by the speaker in the poem, he is of the opinion that there is no need of a wall between his property and that of his neighbor. It is a waste of time mending the wall every spring. Moreover, the speaker is sure that his apple trees will never get across to his neighbor's property and eat the cones under his neighbor's pine trees. If the poet suggests him about it, the neighbor thinks that Good fences make good neighbors. 
Don't look at me that way. I had my hair cut off and sold. The above extract is taken from the prose, The Gift of Magi, written by O. Henry. Della said the above sentence to her husband, Jim. Both Jim and Della kept their attempts to buy a gift for each other. In order to gather the money, Della sold her precious and beautiful hair. When Jim entered house, he was shocked to see Della without her lovely hair. At that time, Della uttered the above words. Parish should be proud of us. The above extract is taken from the play The Pie and the Tart written by Hugh Chesterman. It is said by Pierre to John. It is the tale of two beggars, John and Pierre, that wander the French streets. They were suffering from the fire's cold and were starving too. Pierre wittily says to his key partner, John, that they naturally make a nice pair and that Paris should be proud of them. Death second self that seals up all in rest. The above extract is taken from the poem Sonnet 73 composed by William Wordsworth. The poet compares night sleep with the death. After the sunset in the west, the remaining light is slowly extinguished in the darkness. Similarly, Sleep closes the eyes temporarily at night. Death will close the eyes permanently. It is this blasted cold. If I stop walking, I shall freeze. The above extract is taken from the play The Pie and the Tart, written by Hugh Jesterman. It was said by Pierre to John. It is a tale of two beggars, John and Pierre, that wander the French streets. When the play begins, Pierre was seen pacing restlessly, that is moving up and down. When John asked if he should do, if he should do that in severe cold, Pierre said the above words. Give me your watch. I want to see how it looks on it. The above extract is taken from the prose, The Gift of the Magi, written by O. Henry. Della bought a platinum fob chain to be used for Jim's watch in place of the old leather strap that he used. She was so curious to see how it looks on his gold watch, which belonged to his father and grandfather before him. She was usually called Anne sometimes tender one. The above extract is taken from the prose The Girl Who Was Anne Frank, written by Louise D. John. The author of the prose gives us an introduction about the members of Otto Frank's family that in 1926, first daughter, Margot, was born and three years later, his second, Annalise Mary. She was also called Anne, sometimes Tender one. And here I learn all by myself. The above extract is taken from the poem Bhutto, composed by Toru Dutt. Bhutto said the above sentence to Guru Dronacharya. Bhutto had gone to Dronacharya to learn the science of archery. As Bhutto was neither from a royal family nor rich, Drona rejected him. Bhutto revered Drona as his master and got his inspiration and learnt on his own. She cannot see the life she gave. The above extract is taken from the poem CLM, composed by John Massfield. The poet John Massfield laments that he has grown so much physically that his mother would not be able to recognize him. He also meant that he had grown so unworthy of her. 
of all her sacrifice that she would not be able to recognize him. Will you buy my hair? The Evo extract is taken from the prose The Gift of the Magi, written by O. Henry. Della said the above sentence to a shopkeeper. Della wanted to buy a gift for Jim and she had only $1.87, which was not sufficient to buy any gift. Hence, she decided to, tell, she decided to sell her hair and buy a good gift with the money she would get. Therefore, she went to a shop and asked whether they would buy her hair. But nobody could ever count my love for you. The above extract is taken from the prose, The Gift of the Magi, written by O. Henry. Della said the above sentence to her husband, Jim. Both Jim and Della kept their attempts to buy a gift for each other. In order to gather the money they needed to buy a gift, they sold the most precious things they possessed. Though their gifts proved to be useless, their love for each other was really priceless. I have read Anne Frank's diary. The above extract is taken from the prose The Girl Who Was Anne Frank, written by Louis G. John. When argumentative young student once asked his professor that how he knew that the human race was worth saving, the professor replied that he had read Anne Frank's diary. I don't really see the necessity. I really don't see the necessity. The above extract is taken from the play The Pie and the Tart, written by Hug Chesterman. When Pio was arrested for begging, the judge demanded the explanation for the same. Pio said that he must leave. At this time, the judge said the above sentence. I am not lousy, I am starving. The above extract is taken from the play The Pie and the Tart, written by Huck Chesterman. Pio said the above sentence to John. John overheard the conversation of Mr. Galtire and his wife Marion. He came to know the secret sign to obtain the pie. He suggested Pio to go to the lady, Mrs. Marion, and kiss her hand to get pie. At this time, Pio said the above sentence. Dear students, here afterwards, I present only the extracts which are very very important even i tell you the names of the poems and prose kindly find the reference to context all the best well choose a good looking one this is from the pie and the tart said by marion to her husband mr galtire you have no work in hand have you this is chosen from A Wrong Man in Worker's Paradise, The Girl of the Silent Valley, Silent Torrent, told it to the wrong man. She got out her curling irons and lighted the gas. This is from The Gift of Magi. Only test of fire makes fine steel. Abraham Lincoln's letter to his son's teacher. I promised my in my faithfulness. This is from Bhutto. Bhutto said it to Dronacharya. Give me, O youth, thy right hand thumb. This is taken from Bhutto, composed by Torudat. This is said by Dronacharya to Bhutto. I am me without my hair, ain't I? Said by Della to her husband, Jim, taken from the gift of the Magi. If you can cure animals, you can cure my son. This is from Louis Pasteur, a lady who came to her, his laboratory carrying her son who was bitten by a mad dog. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. 
this is from mending wall what have i done to keep in mind my debt to her and woman kind this is from the poem clm the poet tells it the holes in your tunic don't interest me this is from the pie and the tart But make it seven days and squint slightly. Again, this is from the play, the pie and the tart. When yellow leaves are none, or a few do hang. This is from Sonnet 73. You will have to look at the time a hundred times a day. This is from the gift of Magi, said by Della to her husband Jim. Man triumphs over woman still. This is from C L M. The poet says this. Well, your honor, I must live. This is from the pie and the tart. Let's move on. Times are flying. This is said by the people of the paradise. It is from. A wrong man in workers' paradise. Once again, I had a game to play. A new fellow traveler, dear students. This is from the eyes are not here. This is said by the poet. This is said by the author. I have a hollow in here that all the birds of the air could nest in. This is from beyond the tart. The grief that inscribed its intensity. This is from the poem "Sorrow's Crane," composed by Manmohan Singh. That on the ashes of his youth doth lie. Sonnet seventy-three. Give it to me quick. Gift of Majai. Why don't you look out of the window? This is from the eyes are not here. Do germs form the germs, or do they just come of themselves? It is from Louis Pasteur. We have to use a spell to make them balance. This is from Mending Wall. The poet says. Dear students, so far I have presented more than forty-five reference to context questions, and many of them I answered. Some of them I left it to you to answer them. I wish you all the best. Keep watching SPSS Online Learning for English Grammar, Prose Poetry, and Social Science. I wish you all the best. Thank you.